Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if, is say x Grafia part 1. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video, let's start this video. The job had been interesting at first. Well, to be honest, all jobs had the potential of being interesting. They certainly drove a wedge into the daily monotony of her current life as wife, mother, retired high devil, and maid. Though Grafia Lucifuge was content with her life, that did not mean she didn't get bored. And so, she jumped on any source of entertainment she could find. So far, she had her silent fun messing around with her sister-in-law, one Rhea's Gremory. It was amusing to watch the young devil, now her relative by marriage, squirm in embarrassment as she tried to act all cold and aloof. Of course, this was all to help that one grow up to be a splendid devil, thus, on other times she amused herself by intercepting Rhea's devil petitions from the mortal world. She'd go there to the human's house in her place, solving whatever problems they had, and leaving Rhea's confused when she finally got around to having her peerage try and solve the problem. The day was another such time. And the case was particularly more interesting on the face of it than any she'd encountered lately. So that was a first. When she was sure her duties were done, she sped out of the underworld up to the mortal world. The request had been most unusual and had piqued her interest and her mischievous side. She appeared at some distance away from the target, dressed in the exact same clothes that she usually wore in the mansion. Humans ogled her as she walked down the street. Perhaps it was due more to her innate beauty than what she wore. Maid outfits were commonplace in Japan, after all. Her silky smooth silver hair, her beautiful pale face, her full, luscious, and the sensual curves hidden behind the fabric of her dress, all added to an almost supernatural allure about her that made men's heads turn. Eventually she found her target. It was the home of one Issei Haidu, the human who had sent the strange petition. Standing in front of the door, she hesitated. She could sense that Issei was, but he was up in his room. Someone else was here, probably a mother or father, and would undoubtedly raise questions as to why a maid was standing there at the door. The thought was amusing to contemplate, but for now Grafia wanted to get this done and over with first. So she stepped through the fabric of reality using her devil magic and appeared with a solemn crimson glow right in front of her target. Whoa. Someone exclaimed. Good morning, master, Grafia said in greeting. She bowed, making sure her hanging swayed like fruits from the motion. Your devil has come to answer your wish. Grafia saw a normal teenage human, tall and skinny, with wild brunette hair and piercing gray eyes. She suppressed a hidden chuckle to see him look so surprised and flustered at her appearance. In a way, his youth made it seem cute. As you can plainly see by my sudden appearance in your room, I am a supernatural being, which you may know as a devil. Whoa. An honest-to-goodness devil. Precisely, Haidu Sama. She said Sama in such a way that would entice mortals, and to no surprise a say, expression shifted when he was addressed in such a servile way. Though you may not have realized it, you sent us a plea, a request if you will, regarding something you wanted most above all things. Yes I mean, I just wrote some random shit in my notebook there. What you did was open a small portal to our realm, to hell, where your pleas were heard. As devils it is our responsibility to receive such requests, and to grant them for a price. The say. Holy shit. Grafia's eyes crinkled up in a smile. Now, as to the nature of your request you asked to be able to do everything that you wanted to do with a maid correctly. Why yes. Is this to your liking? She said, making a twirl and showing off to the boy briefly the many possible curves her body could make. Oh gosh yes. Fufu inwardly she was very pleased. It was like someone finding a new toy. She'd found a jackpot in this impressionable youth. This made devil sand, could I touch you? Issei asked. He was breathing, and his eyes were dead set on Grafia's body. She allowed the boy's grasping hands to come near before she danced coyly out of the way. Grafia said, smirking. Master, you're not allowed to do that, not without paying the price. I'll do it. I'll pay anything. 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 But master, do you even understand what anything means? My soul, right. Isn't that what devils are supposed to want? Well, I'll give it. Take it. Just, please let me have a taste of your body. Issei's expression took on a more perverted slant as he stared at her body greedily. Grafia blinked, feeling a bit surprised. Her sources pointed to the fact that the boy should not be that desperate. At the very least, he shouldn't be desperate enough to bargain with his own soul so easily. No devil even did that anymore nowadays. Are you sure about this, kid? Asked Grafia, her playfulness discarded. She held out her hand to him, like she was about to conclude a handshake deal. She was still smiling, but behind that smile was the placid gaze of an unfeeling predator. She'd become like a true devil, who would not hesitate to bargain and interfere with people's lives. Personally, it was a little disappointing, really. Still, she couldn't find it in her to completely ruin the mortal's life. She figured she'd let the kid have his fun for a bit, she'd lecture him or something, then she'd scoot off back to hell. 
She'd forget this day ever happened, like she'd just been bitten by a dog, nothing more. Yes. I'm sure. Issei said. And with that, he took her hand. See. It felt like something had shifted in the air. Grafia looked around her, confused. It was the same air as if some great magic had occurred. But surely not, she thought. She hadn't even made a formal compact with the mortal. She shook off the strange feeling and then focused on the mortal's desperate grabby hands as they began to paw all over her body. Well then, she said, come on then. Sample this hot body as much as you like. You're free to do it, master. She was ready for anything, having already experienced her share of man's dirty depredations. What she didn't expect was the little jolts of lightning that coursed through her once he started touching her. Oh Ariel made a real girl, so forceful, master, she said, in between small gasps, trying to hide her sudden discomfort. Were the kid's hands made of static or something? Just his touching her was almost enough to make her shudder. And he was only fondling her all over the fabric of her costume, so it didn't make sense. Before long, a warm, soothing sensation, like the beginnings of a drunk state, washed over Grafia. The heat became warmer, like a summer day in hell. It was so warm that her brain felt like it was steaming a pot of hot broth. Without realizing it, she came to and found the kid had managed to strip her of most of her clothes. Hey she was about to say, but the moment she was about to move, her fingers touched her bare skin, and she shivered, as pure honeyed pleasure came shooting into her brain. Awaha. Bewildered, she could only watch as the boy eagerly stripped her of her last vestments, revealing her fullness to him. Did the contract include this part? She couldn't remember. Her brain was all hazy, from the strange heat that had come bubbling out from within her. First, he caressed her face, as if tracing the beauty displayed there. Each point of contact made her skin burn, and now it was as if she were blushing to the roots of her hair. Then his hand moved from her face to touching her dot as Say's fingers lightly circled the small nub on her dot then, he pinched them, and a sudden sensation made Grafia's whole body seize up, like she was being blasted by an electricity spell. A hot horse wine escaped her mouth as he continued to tweak and pinch her. Then, as if knowing the effect he had over her, he stopped, returning to circle her perk mountains. His feather-like touch was so tantalizingly pleasurable, assaulting her brain with tiny jolts. So hot he muttered. So warm, she wondered if Heidi Issei was even aware of what he was slowly doing to her. He now positioned himself between her thighs, kneeling and in her pink, sodden entrance, which even now betrayed her stoic face by leaking her precious honey. She was sure he hadn't missed that. Even the blind could have seen it. He ran his fingers up her thighs. His caresses down there made her bite her, made her force down a squeal. Each feathery stroke and rub made her brain boil from the sheer output of pleasure, her knees almost buckling and sending her straight down on his face. He was slowly driving her insane. Then his fingers grazed her lower dot she froze, like helpless prey, as he focused on her steaming nethers. I wonder how they taste, this idiot. His breath was so close, so tantalizingly close. Just a bit more, just a bit more, and shed 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 what? Was she really expecting it? She, Grafia, high-ranking devil. Even as she tensed, she realized he was no longer in the same spot. He'd moved to just behind her, touching and raining down her back. Predictably her back arched, as she had lie from the shuddering pleasure he coaxed from her. He planted his face smack dab on the area above her smooth round dot. While he caressed the contours of the ladder, his hot breath circled and traveled from side to side, showering her in an endless cascade of dot. The sheer intimacy of it all literally drove her insane. She bucked and writhed against his clothed body, like a that had scented a primate. As he stood to full height behind her, she no longer froze up at his touch, instead welcoming his roving hands as they traveled freely all over her body. He bit her shoulders, then net his way up her, then nibbled her chin. He did this on the other side of her neck, culminating in a tentative attack on her dot she whined and caught herself in the last moment from outriding him. No. She was promised to another and had a responsibility to her child. You're so pretty, ma'am, Issei whispered, right in her ear, invoking exactly the reaction in her as one would expect. Be the valley of her ample as he needed then. He gobbled on each, separately, then together, his tongue over the sensitive nubs. He thoroughly conquered her navel, fighting his way downward back to her crotch, where her thighs met. Then, after pausing for a while at the threshold, he gave her one dot. Ah. Crackling hot pleasure enveloped her. Just that one piece of contact, and already it felt as if he'd been doing her for the whole day. Her spray out shamelessly, coating the poor kid's face as they rained down from her convulsing dot she had, like a cow, her body collapsing on top of him. Um she can hear him speak. I'm sorry about that ma'am. It was just my first time, and I didn't really know how to do stuff. That was just his first time. What was he, a natural Casanova? Or was he just a human with naturally pleasurable hands? She shook her head, both at him and an attempt to clear her thoughts. Master, I thank you for your service, but I believe it is time for me to do the same to you. Even as she spoke her mind worked non-stop. Why did she need to do the same for him? 
But all other thoughts were fully ignored as she stood up, sat on the side of the bed, then reached for the front of Issei's pants. Oh, uh, wait a second ma'am. There's something you gotta know. And what's that? She purred, rubbing the hot mass that was unmistakably his hidden. She slid his pants down slowly to reveal something quite surprising. She stripped off his boxers to confirm what she thought must have only been her imagination. His fleshy was as her forearm, but seemingly much, much longer. And her. Her were just as monstrous, hanging there like a pair of grotesque fruits. I can't believe it. She really couldn't believe what she beheld with her eyes. It might be her attention, or it might be her closed breath, but the thing began to grow right in front of her. It became 16 inches of purely magnificent, the size rivaling his leg in sheer diameter. Standing at full mast proudly above her, she was certain that that might have been the source of the boy's strange connection to dot such unreasonable biology shouldn't exist in an immature or mortal child. It was almost as if she stared up at Issei's face, which had become shrouded in some too read expression. But the smoldering light of his eyes was unmistakable. The sin had overtaken the young man, and luckily, for him, there was a suitable target right in this very room. And for some reason she couldn't say no. Her nethers seemed to take joy in the situation, weeping streams of her to collect on the bed. Maybe it was because of this dot or maybe it was the contract. Hells, maybe it was the boy. She leaned forward and touched the base of his great girth before she took a breath, breathing in his potent musk. The smell of it a switch somewhere in her mind, and Graphia was now far beyond the point of no return. Oh God Issei said, shuddering. Devil made San, I know it's late and all, but could I know your name? It's Graphia, master, she said, the rich smell of his burning a fire in her brain. She pawed insistently on the hairy base and leaned her almost lazily against his hot pulsing dot nice to meet you. Nice to meet why OSA yelped in pleasure as the maid suddenly began to service him, something he hadn't ever imagined experiencing in all his years. Graphia made a slurp as her tongue began to roll up the underside of his member. It's so big, M-A-S-T-R I don't know if it can even fit in my mouth. That's alright, Graphia san I just do what you can. Issei bit him as he watched a maid devil's head move under his tough erect mast. His eyes were locked, entranced upon his. Her mouth was open, her tongue lolling out to caress the underside, up and up until she wrapped her smooth, warm around his dot. She pressed her tongue over the head. Moving entirely on instinct she bobbed her head, slowly working herself over the surface of his, enough to make the mortal shudder. He reached out to grasp her gray hair, squeezing and pulling it as unlimited pleasure was being from him through just her tongue. It just felt so awesome. Her beauty was already breathtaking enough, now she literally took his breath away on the bulbous head of his member. The warmth of her, the wetness of her mouth, the feel of her tongue wriggling about, and the way her hands pumped on the rest of his length, traveling freely up and down his 16 or so inches. Not even masturbating with a fully authentic felt this good. Issei squirmed where he stood, his gaze rising to the ceiling as he literally felt his crotch melting. It was strange that a self-proclaimed devil should bring him heaven in such great doses. Graphia san that's. He couldn't even begin to describe the ultimate pleasure. Below, the devil's mouth hummed in self-satisfaction. The vibrations caused on his head only made his say how leave in her, even as she quickened her bobbing motions, her hands now rubbing much faster. It seemed that his turgid length would be too much for the devil, but his say was proven wrong, slightly, when Graphia started pushing her head forward and down the initial inches of his length, before pulling up, then a moment later descending again, each motion pushing his and ever into her mouth. Before long nearly five inches of him were within her mouth, and the sixth inch of his head was nestled in her daughter as clearly bulged out from the sheer size of his pulsing girth, even while her tongue continued to work on overdriving up and down and all over his sensitive length. By now he was no longer able to withstand the assault on his senses, no longer able to control the imminent explosion that surged from within his adult senses. He took one last look at the impossibly beautiful woman sitting on his bed and giving him his best and first ever, and he was gone. Issei's exploded in exactly the way one expected. After a brief moment of nothing, as spurts of his came shooting through his enormous length, white, burning soon flooded Graphia's s, most of which shot straight through her and into her gut. Already experienced with such things, she was nonetheless taken off guard by the sheer volume expunged by his, as it slowly but surely filled her up, feeding her a veritable feast of his baby-making daughter closed around his length like the seal of a vacuum, keeping him steady, even as he continued to pulse out his potent essence. Eventually, after what seemed like an eternity later, the relentless spewing of jizz ended. Graphia felt molten fire paint her ass, filling her from belly to belly. She felt full, so full, like she'd just eaten at a feast. Slowly, her mouth retreated, leaving a trail of my essence to cool on the surface of his member. It culminated in a string of semen and saliva connecting her and his like a bridge. Graphia then made a sound, and even that into her. She ate in her, like she was enjoying his taste coursing through her mouth. She exhaled and demonstrated her cleanliness to Issei. Not one of his was left to linger in her mouth. 
all had been dutifully, as was proper. She murmured, placing her head against his length. The smell, the taste, the sensation of irresistible. Grafia knew something was wrong, but her body and her soul no longer cared. To hell with dignity, she wanted this. She and Edit his, which still stood proud, though a bit bowed, after the ejaculation. They locked eyes. The devil and the mortal. Yet now it was more accurate to call them two beasts, hungry for more. It didn't take words for one to understand the other. They moved and acted, to fulfill the burning needs their mutual passions ignited. Issei sat on the bed, completely as commanded by Grafia. His member now stood at full attention, by the promise of what would come. She stood on top of him, practically at eye level. At this height she was almost able to touch them with her nethers. Grafia took hold of his shoulders, leaning on them, while Issei planted all over her abdomen. Bit by bit she swayed her, and with each moment she moved ever closer downward, her weeping entrance all but ready to take him in. At this point a casual observer would not have mistaken Grafia for Adel Devil, which was as far away from her usual demeanor as could be. Issei's glands alone seemed like it would pulverize her entrance, and it was almost like a fleshy spear made exclusively to violate. Nonetheless she aligned herself over it, and Issei gripped his to push up, meeting her halfway. For a moment they just stayed that way, male and female. Ah she had wordlessly, her breath catching in her as the moment continued. She was at the precipice, and was about to cast herself over the edge. Then Issei, perhaps impatient, gripped her and pulled her down, his now slowly and her moist body moved his body, in an effort to screw her in, bit by bit, inch by inch, grinding into her as she stretched and stretched some more to accommodate his enormous girth. Steam rose from Grafia's slowly reddening face, as she struggled to pace her breath over the sensations akin to being pierced by some holy weapon. She said, wheezing, her eyes crossed. After a while, he was in. Unfortunately, it was just that dot and judging by Grafia's pleading pants, she knew well what more lay in store. She gritted her teeth as the mortals inevitably made him push her down on him, pushing up even more and more into her warm passage. Issei for his part now felt the beginnings of a suction-like sensation over his, as her velvety tunnel squeezed and stretched all over him. Then, Issei began rocking his body, up into her in a small rhythm. Each upward motion made her. Either lover keenly felt the other's searing heat. Issei's motions worked to drill slowly into her, until he was able to reach the halfway point. Even at the halfway point she looked like she was already spent. She salivated her freely and uncontrollably, desperately trying to lubricate the pillar below it to ease her impalement. The drip down to the base of his, pooling in his, and making such a funky smell that sent shivers down Issei's spine. Their nails dug into each other as he began to reach even into her. They didn't feel the pain at all, for Issei's pace had quickened, his small portion embedded within now sawing, causing Grafia to yelp and squeal. She was well beyond coherent words now, reduced to beast-like howling. A part of Issei that recalled his mother was still downstairs, shoved the nearest thing he found a piece of her maid clothing into her mouth and silenced her cries. The action seemed to turn her on even more, as saliva quickly soaked the fabric, and she tightened even more over him. She came, exploding hot streams of her essence out over his body, turning that area with her dot. Tears streamed down her unseeing eyes as he continued to pump her body. His was only halfway the monstrous length still looking quite ominous compared to her slim curvy. Soon, Issei's motions finally hit the limit, or so it seemed. He felt an obstruction. Which was to say that he now felt his member press against her cervix. Bits of his preused, causing the closed entrance to soften and open. Grafia made a keening sound at the back of her, as she now felt the strain of the foreign object entering her cervix. She gritted her teeth, drew leaking through the fabric in her mouth, her claws digging to draw blood in Issei's skin. A sudden pain made the latter, and in the process he surged several inches, nestling in her and stretching it to the limits. Squelching sounds now came clear from the point where Issei's clearly stretched Grafia's tight tunnel. Each of his subsequent s caused leaves of her nectar to rain down freely on his legs. She gasped, throwing her head back as stars burst in her vision. Issei could feel Grafia's body trembling in his arms, as she came. Her whole mind and body tried to deal with the fact of his enormous impaling on her. Grafia's belly now looked completely distended, like she was dot the visible bulge there marked where Issei's gigantic member had ground itself, pushing her body to the limit. In her dazed moments, she felt a bit of wonder at that she'd taken in plenty before that had filled her to the brim, but only this mortal had completely blown everyone away, and now filled her up, and then some more. And he wasn't even completely yet. Miraculously she felt little pain, only a bubbling, seething hot pleasure that started building up, only mere moments after she'd just met. Each of Issei's s now worked to widen the gap, to force more of his into her already beleaguered tunnel, expanding her belly as he kept the pace on. Each, to Grafia, felt like Issei was her brain outright, so intense was the sensation of his titanic girth into her overwhelmed body. Steam rose from Issei's sweating thighs, as the heat of his exertion evaporated, the Grafia splattered freely down there, causing a slightly pungent Ulmusk to drift up and envelop the two lovers. 
the scent caused them to move even more, seeking more and more pleasure as they began to build up to the explosive climax. And the very thought of it seemed to turn Graphia on, as she came yet again, twitching violently on top of him, her gagging and convulsing around his giant length. Seeing her in this way was the trigger the former essay needed. He felt the familiar strain of his incoming ejaculation, as bolts of pure pleasure up his spine. There was no turning back. His rose, contracting, as Issei grunted one, final time. Graphia remained open, gaping, as testament to the sheer size that had kept drilling into it for the longest time. It didn't take long for leftovers to gush out, like a flood from a broken dam, overflowing past her thighs and onto the bed to leave a messy, funky puddle. As if she'd momentarily forgotten how, she was slow to close her thighs, and when they did the cooling mess made a squishing sound, causing her to make one final shudder. They stayed in that way for what seemed like hours. For some reason, Graphia felt safe and content in Issei's hold, far more than she'd ever been before. It was difficult to believe, this being a teenage mortal who until hours ago had only seemed like a pervert destined for mediocrity. And yet she, pure-blooded devil and veteran of a hundred wars, had fully submitted, like he was a greater specimen of being who warranted much tribute. The distant part of Graphia's mind indeed felt like she should be warier or even terrified. This situation was exactly as if some spell had been cast upon her, adding to her mind. And indeed, maybe there was one such a spell, perhaps cast by that 16-inch wand the mortal wielded so easily. Graphia sand, that was so great as say mumbled into her hair. Rather than shifting into her cooler demeanor, or even snap out of whatever wolfunk he placed on her, Graphia found herself blushing, drawing even closer to the mortal and his prodigious weapon. The lad was hung like a horse, and had the vigor to match. She found herself rubbing onto that half-mast in due course, causing it to rise once more to attention. Ah, you want another go, Graphia san Are you sure? I mean won't you get addicted? But you're just so strong and wonderful my master, Graphia cooed, every word as true as can be. I see, I see, so Graphia made Sen wants to be my, though the word sent an ominous shiver through her heart, this was nonetheless accompanied by a clear, delicious shudder up her spine. Why yes, master, she breathed, using her thigh to rub insistently against his tall, length. So then, so then, so then. You agree to become my personal maid from now on? Of course Graphia purred. She paused, blinking, as if what she'd said had suddenly come back to her. I I whatever second thought she'd entertained disappeared like dust in the wind. There was a feeling, as before, that the lock had been set firmly into place. And Graphia could no longer pay attention to it. The seal the contract that she didn't even know had been signed, she essay, giving the jubilant mortal his first dot. And so, she continued, her eyes glittering with, I want more, master. She rose, swinging her body on top of essay. She swung like fruits in the breeze, her belly like a water balloon. Issei watched it all in proud fascination. She then turned around, presenting her to him in an enticing manner. She looked over her shoulder and winked at him with shuttered eyes, her slightly parted, her tongue sliding over her teeth. Issei examined her soaked entrance, which still glistened with drying dot the pink puffy entrance still gaped from his previous assault. Then Issei placed his throbbing against that cute little entrance. All 16 inches were enturgid and ready for yet another round, the size easily dwarfing her thigh. She backed into him slowly, after lining herself up. Issei gripped him to help stay on target. Her weeping entrance his glands yet again, and it seemed his imagination, but they seemed to open immediately, like her lower had a mind of their own. The other's genitals felt so searingly hot that each suppressed a shudder at the sensation of meeting. Please, master, Graphia gasped. Please help me. Tear me apart. Break me. He moved forward, causing her to bite her lower and scream as she were immediately apart when his head entered, stretching like paper around him. She would never get used to the sensation of something so ravaging her s. It hurt then, and it still hurt. But she loved it in any case. Issei seemed like a quick study as his grinding enticed ever more jolts of pleasure from her, causing her to squeal like a stuck pig. And then when Issei, fully encouraged by the sight of her writhing under him, a couple more inches, causing a visible bulge to reappear in her belly, she collapsed on the bed at once stunned and electrified by the sudden sensation, only held up by her through Issei's unrelenting column of flesh, like she was spit-roasted. It was enough to trigger her latest, as she is the portion of Issei's that had broken through. Fresh new now coated his member, even as the bedsheets below received their next helping of Graphia's raw nectar. Issei paid little mind to Graphia, instead moving on and accelerating his rhythm and pushing himself into her with every frantic effort. Dot. Squelching sounds now made themselves apparent, mixed in with Graphia's needy wails, all while the bulge of her stomach widened. Issei's mating instincts were now in earnest, and Graphia was lost to the heady pleasure of receiving his animalistic passion. Issei took up her arms, pinning them behind her and using them like a horse's reins. With that he was able to come knocking on her cervix once more, causing her back to arch from sheer, sweet agony. 
the pressure was intense, and already Issei could feel the entrance widening from his, welcoming his return eagerly. I'm going in, he whispered. He gripped her and rocked his body, flopping his up and down to tease her ass opening. Biting her, Grafia could only nod wordlessly as Issei pulled at her arms with all his might, and at the same time forward with his dot he had breached her once again, stirring up the that was still, and causing Grafia's frayed nerves to fire up, pushing her to yet another explosive climax. Grafia's belly was again, like a tent, and each of Issei's s was like a fist were punching up from within. He was about three quarters or so, her elastic s perhaps adjusting more fully to his size from last time. Are you alright, Grafia san? Once again, words seemed to fail her. Issei was amazed to see her literally crying, gushing out streams of her while she chewed and strangled his member like it was a living being unto itself. Slurch. Splurch. Each of his potent s only served to soak him with even more of her tangy essence, as if Grafia just couldn't get enough. Both of them couldn't get enough. Issei's grip on her tightened, his back and forth now like he didn't care at all for how he was treating Grafia. It was almost like she was a living fleshlight for him, as he dove into her relentlessly with his iron shaft. Her belly bulged and receded in a fast, almost blistering rhythm. Her pale, beautiful skin rippled endlessly. Her hair, thoroughly moist from sweat, swayed and sprayed sweat every which way. The bed creaked and groaned at their frantic, merciless pace. Their eyes made fat, slapping sounds as they collided. Slowly, Issei's pulling made Grafia's upper body rise from the bed until she literally hung, suspended, on his girth, like a doll hanging from invisible strings with its lower body, held up by a great pillar of flesh. Both of them grunted from the strain. Grafia from being spitted out like this, causing a minor ache to her ass as her lithe frame bounced up and down on his dot, and Issei felt a splendid, shivering pleasure as he plowed her warm velvet tunnel, completely dominating the devil mate as he rode her to the final stretch of their journey. When he came, he pulled her arms back as much as he could, causing her head to bump on his, while he slammed upward into her as he was able, forming a bulge that distorted her belly like nothing else before. The explosion seemed to drain his very soul. A fountain of white hot gunk, freshly made from his, came streaming out, taking a full second just to come streaming up his length. It ended up enlarging her so much that it began spilling to the sides. They both howled their pleasure to the heavens as his jizz made a second coating of her s, thoroughly claiming her for himself, and drenching her with the taste, smell and essence of his baby dot. Her lesson poo cascaded down from their joined genitals in great goopy globes. The mixture of their raised an even greater funky mist that swamped the whole room with their spent arousal. Issei placed his arms around the devil maid before he directed their bodies down on the bed. If Grafia noticed that his grasp was a little possessive, then it seemed to be nothing to her. The couple basked in the warm afterglow of their second round of dot. Issei felt the intense satisfaction of pumping a mature woman with his potency, while Grafia let the pleasant churning in her ass guide her to a peaceful trance. She belonged to him now. Body and soul. He'd made his mark within her, defiling her from end to end in such a decisive way that there was no room for misinterpretation. She was his, and by the way her stomach glowed a sign to devils that life had blossomed in her ravage that drowned in his that fact was to be solidified soon in the coming months. But Grafia didn't have to wait that long for her soul to admit defeat. She didn't have to see the glow on her navel, nor the invisible threads that sprung from her soul to say, nor the small glimpse of a collar that s its way around her neck before disappearing from view. She had wholeheartedly decided from then on to be his, and there was no looking back. They wouldn't realize it at the time, but the state of her belly was an omen of what would come later. For much of that day, and indeed for several days after, Grafia and Issei spent every waking moment on their honeymoon. Any distraction be it school, Issei's parents or even hunger, were instantly covered by Grafia and her array of mysterious magics. They shouted in the daytime, their ink causing thumping sounds that should have been to miss, which were actually missed. They howled into the night, relentless enough to disturb the people of the house and their neighbors, but of course no one came to complain. Issei didn't even question it, for he knew she used such strange things for their benefit. Grafia spent many hours slaving over his horse dot no orifice of her body was spared its ravaging hunger, as she wholeheartedly offered each one to it during her efforts of teaching her new master all that she knew of dot. Issei for his part was a fast learner. He was as eager for it as any teenage boy would be. And for some reason, Grafia didn't even need to exert her esoteric magic to grant her lover extra vigor. Issei seemed to have some sort of invisible well of libido that never ran out, as evidenced by the fact that his never did truly run out in all the hours they spent rutting together like beasts. Issei's growing mastery of course only served to ensnare Grafia in whatever strange spell had been cast over them. Towards the end, when it seemed that their passionate lovemaking was nearing a state of torpor, though it was only true for Grafia, who was running out of devil energy to maintain her vitality, Issei could still have gone on, the couple spent their waking hours cuddling against each other. Grafia's bulging belly was a near-permanent sight, filled with gallons that had been deposited there over a long period of time. 
Grafia eventually fell asleep as she was blowing a say, leaving much of his buried in her mouth, and which for some reason was no discomfort for the devil. That left a say bewildered, though he spent a while longer sleeping the devil maid's mouth as he played with her body, pumping a few more loads into her stomach before he too fell asleep. Eventually, all good things ended, as inevitably they did. That was not to say that Grafia ended up leaving Issei, her job done, teleporting back to hell and such. It only meant that the couple now spent their time only half the time, as something in Issei's brain had woken up to responsibilities, like school. And though Grafia could easily have used her magic to ensure their days of debauchery continued without rest, she too realized there were plenty of things to do yet, to ensure her new master was well equipped for the days to come. As such, for a time, they were only able to satisfy their burgeoning ass whenever Issei had gone home at the end of the day, and sometimes only after supper. But that was alright. This continued to be mind-blowing for either party. Raphia soon found proof of her master's control over her when she returned to hell. She had been given evil pieces by the devil game system, one of which was inexplicably tied to Issei's energy. Was he a devil? She did not question it, as Issei was far more remarkable than any devil she'd met. The sight of the pieces though, made something in Grafia uneasy, though not for any serious reason. No, she was only reminded that her new master was far greater than he appeared, and that she alone might not be enough, ultimately. Issei was well within his rights to give the rest of the pieces to other women, pulling them into his dot. It was jealousy that led to their first fight. For many nights as they at Issei would notice Grafia seemingly distracted, even angry. Unused to dealing with the common problems that came with dealing with a woman's feelings, he took a while to confront it. When he did, Grafia confessed everything. The nature of the evil pieces, Issei's new role, and her growing fear of being replaced, of being cast aside as the least of master's maids. Issei cemented Grafia's wholehearted love, as if he hadn't already from the outset, by turning her into his queen. Grafia couldn't believe it. In one swift action he had rocked her world and, then later literally rocked her world in the kinky makeup afterwards, where master and maid went out to the second floor veranda to scream their passions to the evening sky. Their fighting became a moot point a few weeks later, when it was discovered that Grafia was carrying his child. It was a moment of much joy for the new couple, more so for Grafia, who felt such profound happiness from the thought of bearing the fruit of their wonderful union. It was during this time that the couple decided on formally entering society and announcing their status to the world, even if Grafia had to tweak it along. Issei's parents were overjoyed at the prospect of grandchildren, but of course they were not able to insist much on marriage. Nor did they comment much on the strange fact that there was a foreign lady that had suddenly appeared in their house, claiming to be heavy with their son's child. Still, even to the casual outsider it was clear the couple cared for each other very much. The two of them celebrated with hours of raunchy, but soon enough Issei put his foot down, leaving them with periods of inactivity, as he prepared for his future fatherhood role, while Grafia's small baby bump blossomed into full gravidness. The two were as happy as can be, and Issei was clearly devoted to his maid's well-being. Even during the tail end of her, when she was again allowed to have it, Issei took care of her with his enormous tool, knowing the strain she was under. Grafia blushed with pride at this strong and virile specimen of man demonstrating its greatest qualities, and felt content to be placed under the protection of such a being. Their little child, after it was born, was the first, but certainly not the last. The couple's mating rituals now included Grafia very much, now free for him to toy with during months of merely nursing from her dot, and indeed Issei had retained much of his superhuman figure, pumping Grafia nightly with his potential her so completely that she thought he was eagerly trying for number two. By then she was able to take him up to full hilt, and many were the nights where she felt him spear her through completely with his impeccable skills. Number two came soon enough, and then number three, and many more, until the Issei household became a thriving family. In that time, Issei even spied his number two and number three, the next lucky women who caught his gaze. But that was another story entirely. For the moment, all under that roof were content. And every night, after the children were put to bed, mommy and daddy would continue their relentless dance. Issei would marvel at the beautiful woman bouncing eagerly on his, throwing her silvery hair every which way as she had leaked from her, falling down her body in many cream white streams and spraying forward with his every upward dot. He thanked the stars for the good luck that sent her his way. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoy this video, like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification. See you in the next video. Goodbye.